Welcome into New Orleans Saints Now. I'm your host, Trace Gerard, And in today's show, we're going to be breaking down the latest Sean Payton trade buzz. And before we get into that, I do have an update that Sean Payton did get out of a seven-hour meeting with the owner of the Arizona Cardinals, Michael Bidwell. He was seen leaving the practice facility. But on top of that, we also have this report from Jane Slater. On the other layer, as for Sean Payton, I'm told for the Cowboys, have had zero contact with him, nor have the Saints with the Cowboys. Just putting this one to bed, Sean Payton is still engaged in conversations with multiple teams, including an intriguing developing team. It's important. It's interesting. We'll see what happens. But if you want to stay updated on all things Sean Payton, all things New Orleans Saints, go ahead and subscribe to New Orleans Saints now today. We are going to be breaking down Saints news, Saints rumors, Saints highlights, all sorts of Saints coverage. We're going to be making Sean Payton videos. Anytime that there's a notable update, we got you covered. It's Saints content by Saints fans for Saints fans. And also, we are in the midst of a huge sub battle with Patrick Seaman and Vikings Now by Chat Sports. We're trying to beat them to 15,000 subscribers. So help me out, Houdat Nation. Last video, we picked up almost 40 subs. So let's run it back, make it happen again. I'm just to the nuns because I'm all business, baby. So if you're all about that business too, subscribe and join the channel. So there's a new mystery team involved. So we now have two reports saying that there's a mystery team developing or a team that's getting involved. If you remember, Diana Rossini earlier this week talked about there's a team waiting on the wall, thinking about or trying to get their ducks in a row, waiting to get on in on the Sean Payton trade. And I have a few guesses of teams I think it could possibly be. And if it were any of these four teams, I would say the Colts, the Chargers, Dolphins, and Chiefs. And hear me out on all four of these. So the Colts, I think, makes sense because I don't know if you're necessarily 100% sold on Jeff, Jeff Saturday. I think he's, you know, was a good story. He's a fun coach. He was a fun, you know, storyline. Maybe got some guys in. That was fun. I don't know if he's a great long-term coach. If Sean Payton wants to go and you have Jeff Saturday, you're telling me you wouldn't want to do that. Brandon Staley. I know the Chargers were saying, we're on on Staley. But, hey, things change. Things happen. I just think that maybe you're not content with just a playoff appearance. Maybe you want to get more success and more uh, and long-term success with Justin Herbert and with a long-term quarterback and, or long-term head coach with Sean Payton. And plus, Payton and Herbert would be a phenomenal, phenomenal duo. Dolphins and Payton, they had rumors that last offseason. There was a whole tampering thing with the Tom Brady stuff. Who knows? I like McDaniels as a coach. I think he's a good guy, and I think he's a great coach. He's very smart, and I like what he's done with the Dolphins. And the Chiefs, this is an interesting one. We all know that a, a Sean Payton had you know, interest in going and getting Patrick Mahomes in the NFL draft. And I think that it could maybe make sense. Could this be the year that Andy Reid finally retires? If the Chiefs go out on top and win a Super Bowl, do you think that, the, that the, he would be content with just saying, hey, I'm done, I won my bowls, I'm going to go ahead and go down and get some cheeseburgers and go to town on those? See, I mean, it makes some sense if you think about it. I don't know if it could happen. It's kind of a long shot, but who knows? You never know. And, and also, I want to say, hear me out on this. What if Sean Payton goes back to Fox this, uh, this football season? Dennis Allen just completely whiffs. He's just not good again, and he's just a bad coach again. No success. They have a bad year. They go and draft a quarterback high in the NFL draft next year. Some people are talking Caleb Williams. I kind of like him as a prospect as well. And maybe Sean Payton could come back because the Saints do have him under contract through January of 2025. So I'm just saying it could happen. It couldn't. I don't really know. But – there's things developing with the Cardinals. The Broncos have definitely showed interest. If Sean Payton is in on there, it could happen. Who knows? This is getting crazy, and things are getting wild. But I want to let hear from you guys, and I want to let you all share your thoughts. Who do you think this mystery team is, if there even is one? Maybe there's not. Maybe it's just smoke and mirrors and trying to drive up the price. Who knows? But I want you guys to let me know. Who do you think the mystery team could possibly be? And if you want to bet on anything throughout the NFL offseason, I'm talking NBA, college baseball, college basketball, hockey, UFC, whatever you want to bet, whatever you like to be a degenerate and gamble on just like me, go ahead and use our proud sportsbook partner, BetUS. Get started with them, chatsports.com slash bet. Use promo code chat125 and you will get a 125% deposit bonus, meaning you will get $125 of free money if you put in 100 bucks. So you'll have $225 to game with. Lay down some cheddar on it. LSU baseball, or you could throw down some money on the Pels. I don't know. It's going to be a good time this offseason to gamble, and I know I'm going to be throwing down some money left and right. So 
Join me at betus.com slash, or chatsports.com slash Brett. Use promo code chat125. All right, next thing's next. Chris Olave is joining the New Orleans Saints and getting just disrespected all over the board. So Chris Olave wasn't even named a finalist for Offensive Rookie of the Year. And I know that this has been kind of out there already, and I don't want to take anything away from the talented guys who were named, like Brock Purdy, Kenneth Walker, and Garrett Wilson. And I know that it's one of those things that he did, Garrett Wilson did have more, or have more yards. He did have a higher, better stats at times. And I, I think, though, that Chris Olave to not even be named a finalist is absolutely insane. It's so disrespectful for that to not even be you know, mentioned. And not to take away, like I said, from Kenneth Walker or Brock Purdy or Garrett Wilson, all three talented players, all three having crazy seasons. Brock Purdy having seven starts, eight games, undefeated. He's in the NFC Championship. That's certainly awesome. But, like, he didn't really play the whole year and kind of has the perfect team around him. And, I'm not, again, I'm not trying to take anything away. But when you look at Chris Olave's numbers, this is impressive considering the team and the situation you had with bad play calling, a lot of injuries all across the board, and worst of all, Andy Dalton is your freaking quarterback. 72 receptions, 1,042 yards, four touchdowns, and 14 and a half yards, and that's pretty dang impressive. And to, not to mention, he did all of this with Andy Dalton as his QB, and I'm not saying that Andy Dalton's the worst quarterback that's ever been out there. I'm just saying that he's, he definitely could have had a better situation. He definitely could have had better uh, you know, options and better guys throwing him the rock. But I, I think Chris Olave should have at least been named a finalist. He's getting disrespected. And honestly, he's my offensive of the rookie of the year. I may be a little bit biased, but hey, I'm a Saints guy, and I love me some Chris Olave. So if you think Chris Olave is your offensive rookie of the year as well, I want you to go down and spam 12 because I'm going to be typing it down there in the comment section. Go and type 12, maybe 12 times. Show him some love. Chris Olave, we love your rook. Keep balling out, and we're looking forward to next season. But hey, I also want to talk about a potential free agent target. Alan Lazard is a name that some people may be not as familiar with, may not really be thinking about, but I think that he could actually be a pretty interesting and a solid wide receiver target for the New Orleans Saints. And if you take a look at the depth chart, you can see there's quite a few guys on here that are going to be hitting for agency. And as we all know, Michael Thomas, he did have his contract restructured to have the minimum cap hit if he were to be cut or traded. So Michael Thomas likely paid, played his last game as a New Orleans Saint. Chris Olave and Rashid Shahid, the future is very, very bright with them too. I believe very strongly that Chris Olave could be a wide receiver one, and I think that he could definitely be the leader of the Saints offense in terms of the pass game. But guys like Marquez Callaway, he's a talented player. I don't know if the Saints bring him back. I personally would. I think that he's a solid guy, and you could probably get him for cheap. Jarvis Landry, Personal thing, I love Juice. I want Juice back, and I would love to get him back. But if the Saints don't want to bring back Juice, you could get similar production as Alan Lazard. If you look at his numbers, 60 receptions, 788 yards, six touchdowns, and 13 yards per catch. And he's also six foot five, 227 pounds, 27 years old. He's a pretty dang good and elite block runner, and he's starting to prove that he's becoming a really good pass catcher. So I want you guys to go down and let me know. If you could pick a wide receiver out of these two, pick one. Type JL for Jarvis Landry, type AL for Alan Lazard. Houdat Nation, as always, it's been a pleasure. Hope y'all have a wonderful weekend. Y'all stay golden. I'll catch you next time.